Hello and welcome to this week's broadcast. My name is Dr. Cameron Jones. I'm an environmental microbiologist and thanks for joining me. Today I am talking about bio tape lifts and I'm going to be running through some of the pros and cons about bio tape lifts. Now, why would you use these things rather than petri plates or aerosol cassettes? Well, they're really a fantastic method for taking surface samples of visibly mold contaminated surfaces. And I'm going to be running through some examples here on this live stream and I'm going to be showing you, for example, what it looks like under the microscope and for example, last week we went out and did a, a post remediation verification on a building and we found mold all over this plasterboard which the remediators had claimed had been fully cleaned. And this is one of the benefits of using tape lifts because you can pretty much very quickly work out whether or not a surface is or is not contaminated. And you've got the documentary proof to put into reports to, in this case, send back to the insurer to show uh, that, it, that it was in fact a failing uh, post remediation verification. But before I move too quickly into some of the pros and cons of uh, bio tape lifts, I want to talk to you a little bit about the history of these really fantastic devices. Now, bio tape lifts have a ANSI standard, which is fantastic. And I'm going to be putting all these references in the show notes at the bottom. And basically the standard is called the standard test method for direct microscopy of fungal structures from tape and its designation is D7658-17. In 2017, it was revised and it's a current standard. And the scope or rationale behind tape lifts is that they are an optical microscopy method for the detection and semi-quantification and identification of fungal structures in tape lift preparations. And the key phrase here is semi-quantitative. So in a sense, they're not as good as aerosols, but they tell you something different about how water damage impacts on a building. And I want to just give you a bit of an example of why this is a big issue. So I mentioned before that this standard test method for direct microscopy. You can purchase this and you can go to the ASTM.org website. But when you actually go out on site and use bio tape lifts, I should mention that in many cases when a home becomes water damaged, the framing timbers are one of the uh, uh, key elements of the building that require restoration. And restoration may take the form of source removal or it may be physical remediation of water damage to this. And so tape lifts are one of the methods of determining either before remediation occurs to work out whether or not you do have a problem, because sometimes timbers can just look discolored uh, and yet people are very worried about mold being a problem. And in other cases, if there's been a severe water ingress event, then there can be some severe mold problems on these framing timbers. And they're particularly useful uh, to um, use. So if, for example, I show you now under the microscope exactly what we see on some of these framing timbers, I'll just get the microscope working now. Often I like to white balance what I can see. This, for example, was taken from a plasterboard wall. Now, the remediators were tasked with carrying out remediation on this water damaged property. 
And yet the client was particularly concerned that it still felt moldy to her. And I asked her why she felt that. And she said that, look, she knew that water actually cascaded through the light fittings and that from her point of view, the remediators had sort of done 80% of the work, but for some reason they'd left a lot of the original plasterboard in place and just cut 60 centimeters from the floor. So, you know, you can actually see this in the uh, photograph here uh, uh, that, that basically there was uh, a lot of remaining plasterboard. Now water came down from the top of the uh, dwelling. And so when we take tape lifts, this is just at 100 times magnification. If I zoom up to 400 times magnification, you start to be able to see these mold spores and chains of fungi very, very, very clearly. Now, if this hadn't been tested for, this lady's property would have been essentially plastered over and all of this mold would have been hidden in her walls. So that's not really a good thing at all. So one of the other things that I uh, want to highlight as well is that tape lifts are particularly useful to use in, in other situations. Certainly in many properties which have poor insulation and condensation issues, uh, many energy efficient apartments that don't ventilate well end up with serious internal window condensation problems. And in many cases, homeowners and, and tenants who are residing in these apartment complexes ring me up and tell me that they've got serious water condensation inside, especially over winter, whenever they run their heaters and that although they ventilate, water accumulates on the internal uh, windows. And so often we're looking for a quick method to test for this uh, 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 presence of mold and, and then provide uh, these reports either to the property manager or body corporate or the owner to prove that there is in fact a problem. But um, I'm going to show you a few more examples of where tape lifts are valuable, but I'm going to play you uh, an um, example of where framing timbers are mold affected. And this is from a well-known builder that advertises on the radio all the time. And they got me in because the owners were very concerned that during construction, their timber framing had really gone uh, a, a shade of green and black. And so they wanted to determine whether or not the uh, affected timber framing was in fact mold contaminated. And so tape lifts along with viable sampling is one of the methods that we used. Another great method for assessing for mold on suspect timbers, especially if they've been flood affected and storm damaged like this house undergoing construction, is to use these tape lifts, which allow me to take a imprint of the uh, suspect surface, look at it under the microscope and catalog what mold hyphae mycelium spores uh, might be present. And this gives us a great idea about whether or not these timbers can be salvaged or whether or not they need to be replaced with new. Okay, so you get a bit of an overview of how uh, uh, tape lifts can be used, but uh, it's not just for water damage and mold. Um, the US Department of Homeland Security uh, uh, recently published a paper focusing on the benefits of tape lift collection as a simple and effective approach for non-destructively testing for chemical signatures in a terror event. Similarly, tape lifts have been used in forensics to collect spore evidence to link a person's uh, location with the environment by using mold and uh, uh, plant spores 
to link a person's whereabouts. So tape lifts are, are particularly flexible in what they can uh, tell you. But other papers, and again, I'm going to put all of these in the show notes description. Uh, mold contamination in air handling units or in air conditioners. Many people, again, tell uh, ring us and, and, and say, look, we're getting a, uh, a smell out of our air conditioning or heating and what can be done. And again, tape lifts are a very good approach to uh, taking some um, samples from the environment to work out whether or not there's any microscopic evidence of mold. Similarly, in this plasterboard example, there are some outstanding publications on cleaning methods and how effective they are at actually reducing microbial contamination and biofilms from bacteria, yeast, and of course, fungi. And so tape lifts are particularly useful for this. And um, before I go back to the uh, microscope, um, I also want to mention that tape lifts are also extremely useful for doing contents assessment. And I can't tell you the number of times we receive telephone calls saying our home contents is water damage. What can I do about it? Well, the thing with home contents is that if they've been in a water damaged building and the water damage was not quickly uh, addressed, usually in the first 24 to 48 hours, if you can smell mold, if you're getting adverse health reactions, then it's very probable that your home contents could at some stage be exposed at least to the airstream containing these mold spores. And in this particular example, you can see that the uh, curtains are visibly mold affected. Um, now, I want to give you another uh, quick example now about a, um, a, a, a leased property. And we were called into this maybe two months ago, uh, a high-end property in uh, um, an expensive suburb in Melbourne. The tenants were paying several thousand dollars per week. They were very upset that every time they drove into the underground car park and uh, walked upstairs that they were hit with this very strong mold smell. And in fact, when the uh, uh, lady called me, she told me that the basement appeared covered in this green dust. And so here is what I found, and here's how tape lifts were used. Now I'm shooting at this quick little video, and you know it's a little bit hard to hear me, but I'm downstairs in this property, and you can probably see the uh, mold on the uh, timber paneling behind me. I'm going to use something called a tape lift to take a surface impression so that I can have a look at this under the microscope. And uh, so I'll show you how we use these. Basically, you just need to lightly press this onto the area or the region of interest. And then I'll take that back to the lab and see what I see under the microscope. This downstairs basement is going to need significant mold remediation. Okay, so you can see that they are a very flexible method of collecting evidence that really people can't argue with. And so I like these a lot. Now, my final example uh, comes from a property that I just inspected on uh, earlier this week. And I haven't done the spore traps on this property yet but what i can show you in this property is that uh, this is from a master bedroom and the uh, wife of uh, the, the the wife who um, uh, spends her time and sleeps in this bedroom has just recently been diagnosed with SIRS or chronic inflammatory response syndrome and she's extremely unwell her husband tells me that uh, she, uh, they got married approximately nine years ago and that for the last seven she's been experiencing a whole range of adverse health uh, impacts. In any case, when both of us moved some of the furniture around in the master bedroom, we could see that there were these really serious uh, 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 you know, e evidence of mole coming through 
and the infrared thermal image on the bottom right hand side um, shows you that in a sense this property has got a, a serious rising damp issue um, and although it's a timber frame home uh, it has a whole bunch of uh, thermal bridging impacts around the window frame and it's particularly cold so in a sense you're getting condensation again forming on the internal framing of the home and uh, uh, because it's uh, warm uh, uh, very warm uh, indoors especially over winter the way they their heating system is arranged they're big big issues of um, uh, 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 mold appearing and uh, I suspect that when I finish all the uh, spore traps that they too are going to confirm a serious indoor air quality problem because the particulate matter counts already uh, failed very badly however I am now going to show you what this particular property looks like under the microscope and again I will white balance this and this is from the lady who has the chronic inflammatory response syndrome and so when I zoom in on the microscope now here and I make this just sharper you can see all of this mold mycelium and again this is just at a hundred times magnification. How about we zoom in and look at some of this fungal hyphae and mycelium a little bit closer. So I'll move this up to 400 times. And here is the, these long filaments that branch are the fungal hyphae or the mycelium. And there's lots of this over there, so I just have to make sure I don't move off the microscope slide. And again, even though the standard says that you can speciate very effectively from the tape lift, it's a lot harder to do than the standard specifies. So you can certainly do total counts and surface area coverage and work out the concentration of mold present in the uh, property in this case on the wall but it's it's much more difficult to speciate this so these um, deposits really look quite uh, ugly in a sense but they certainly confirm that this woman is in fact being significantly affected by mold in her home environment and this is the evidence to prove it so I want to go over some of the negatives associated with tape lifts because if I open these up, they essentially are a very small microscope slide and they have a sticky section on it. And the concept, as you've seen on the videos, is just to press this against the target surface. But as you can appreciate, if I was to turn around and just do this on my wall, an unscrupulous assessor could potentially put this on an area that is not mold affected or not suspected of being mold affected and potentially write up a report which concludes that a home doesn't have a problem when in fact there could be a serious problem and the very small sticky surface area of the slide means that it shows something called sampling bias. So be very aware of sampling bias, hence why all indoor mould and air quality investigations really must use multiple methods of assessment because mould is a serious health threat, but notwithstanding that, tape lifts are fast, efficient, inexpensive, and you get pretty much fast results to inform a remediator that there either is or isn't a problem they, or that the job is complete. In any case, that's the main uh, points that I wanted to get across in this week's live stream. I'm going to put in the show notes and the descriptions for here on Facebook and also onto YouTube some reference materials so that you can follow up yourselves. And next week I'm going to be talking about spore traps because spore traps are extremely useful in doing 
any type of indoor air quality and mold inspection. And uh, I'll be showing you some great examples of this also under the microscope. Bye for now.